Coming up on this edition of City Scene, we talk with school administrators about the new Common Core Standards Initiative. Find out what that means for you and your children. It all starts now on City Scene. Welcome to another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Arizona is implementing Common Core standards this fall. Here to talk to us about how that affects the K through 8 standards in Casa Grande is Dr. Frank Davidson and Dr. Barbara Wright. Thanks for coming on the show. You're very welcome. Happy to be here. Tell us first what your positions are at the school district. I'm the superintendent of the Casa Grande Elementary School District. And I'm the director of curriculum and instruction. So let's begin by talking about what is the educational standards. Well, educational standards actually have been in place for decades. Uh, what educational standards are, are essentially the benchmarks by which we measure student performance. They provide a guide uh, for schools, districts, and students to know uh, what, what the end result of their education is intended to be. So we're changing up our standards. Tell us a little bit about the new ones. The new Common Core standards were designed by a group from across the nation. So they were de devised by the National Governors Association and the Chief School Officers Association and a variety of, of knowledgeable people to develop standards that are rigorous and uh, will bring our students into the 21st century. And why was it initiated? The it was initiated through a research study in which a group of people looked at what do um, students need to know to graduate from high school across the United States. And when they started looking at those things that were uncommon and those things that were uncommon, they decided that we needed to look at all grade levels across the nation and see what, what is it that all students need to know to be ready to be globally, uh, global citizens in the 21st century. So with the new standards in place, what will, what will look differently? First of all, that we're going to see more rigor in the standards uh, in that we'll see uh, students being required to perform uh, skills at greater levels of complexity uh, using more analysis, synthesis, evaluation, more application of skills. I think that's going to be a major change. Uh, the other major change that I think we'll see is that uh, historically, the uh, American curriculum has been characterized as being a mile wide and an inch deep. The approach with the Common Core is to uh, reduce the number of, uh, of standards that are going to be taught at any one grade level, but to teach those standards to a greater degree of complexity, to greater depth. And so for a teacher, that, uh, the implications are significant in that um, I can focus on fewer uh, skill areas or skill clusters and really teach those um, in depth and, and teach them to a greater level of complexity, uh, higher level of application and, um, and synthesis for students. So I think those are going to be the, the major changes as felt by students and as felt by classroom teachers. How is it implemented? Do they slowly start with a certain grade level or is it all grade levels are going to be doing the same practice? Well, well, and uh, it really depends upon the individual state since this is taking place a across the U.S. In our case, we're implementing it uh, grade clusters at a time. So, uh, so last year we began with the early grades and we're moving up through the grades. And I think that that's the approach that, that a good many uh, districts will take. So what we have done since the standards were adopted by the state is we've looked at um, at our main curricular areas, because the Common Core standards are in math and in language arts specifically, and that would include reading and writing. And so we have looked at our math curricula and um, mapped our standards so that student teachers will be teaching um, in a common way across the district. So students will um, have the opportunity to learn all of the standards by the end of the year. So currently, are all of the schools in the district going to this core standards? Yes. So what is Arizona's status in respect to the Common Core Standards? So um, as I said, they, they were adopted in 2010 and 
Um, they have set out a timeline for implementation, as Dr. Davidson uh, referred to. All public schools, charter and traditional district schools, are required by statute to implement the standards that are adopted by the State Board of Education. So all districts in the state are working through this same model, um, with the exception, of course, of private schools, which are not required to, but some private schools are adopting the standards as anyway. So how does this work with the Ames testing? The, um, Arizona is part of a consortium that's developing a new test to assess the new Common Core standards. So currently, school districts are continuing to use the Ames through spring of 2015, in which case we will move to a new standard uh, testing that's based on the Common Core. The, um, the new test is called the PARC. It's the Partnership for Assessment of College and Career Readiness. And so that assessment will um, determine how well our students are doing on the Common Core. Now, um, that is an online-based assessment. There are lots and lots of components that have to be decided and determined before we can actually go to that assessment. But there will be some kind of benchmarking to determine how well our students are doing on the uh, in, uh, implementation of the Common Core. So how does this benefit the students? Well, I think ultimately the, um, the Common Core standards will benefit students in, in a variety of different ways. <clears throat> As we mentioned earlier, we're going to see more rigorous standards, so uh, the intent is for students to, uh, at the conclusion of their K-12 education, to be better prepared to go into the workforce or to, uh, to uh, go off to post-secondary schooling, whether it's a trade school or community college or university. Um, <clears throat> those changes, I, I think, are, are significant for students and will be a benefit to them. The other way that it will benefit students is right now, although all of the schools in Arizona uh, would be using the same standards, um, since No Child Left Behind in 2001, states have really had 50 different sets of standards because each state developed its own standards under No Child Left Behind. We see tremendous variation in, in the, the standards across the states right now. So as, as Common Core is implemented, and because so many states have, uh, have moved toward adoption of the Common Core, we'll see greater uniformity so that as, as students move from state to state, uh, there, will be, uh, there will be more uniformity, more standardization of the curriculum across the states. And there, 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 there are going to be benefits as well for the training of teachers because mm -hmm. if those standards are the same across states, then uh, colleges of education that are preparing teachers are going to be in a better position to, uh, to prepare teachers to implement the, the standards across the U.S. So what does this mean for like first and fifth grades? How will the standard look? So currently in first grade, um, a student might be taught uh, addition and subtraction and um, lots of different components. So the Common Core standards really focus down. So they're really in first grade focusing on addition. So I should be able to, when I leave first grade, add, add going forward, add going backwards, add using numbers, add using shapes, add using manipulatives, and really be able to understand it and be able to write about it. And so writing is a huge component, being able to communicate what I know. And so even in kindergarten and first grade, students are, will be writing so much more. An example of that in fifth grade would be rather than us teaching you the um, algorithm or the steps to solving a problem or converting a fraction to a decimal or back and forth, we'd, we'd teach you those things, but we'd also ask you to write a paper explaining how do I convert a fraction to a decimal and how do I convert it back and why is it important do I do that and where will I use that in my life. So taking that from just teaching the tricks or the tools to teaching the concepts and the understanding of how, why do we do this and how can I use it in my real life. So how will the teachers be trained to do that? Well we have started, as Dr. Davison said, we started with talking to teachers about how to change their instruction and um, asking them to we provide a little bit of training, we ask them to practice that, and we ask them to come back and talk about it, and we provide them a little bit more. So over the course of this last school year, we have had uh, monthly trainings um, from across the district using our, our very best trainers and providing teachers with the change in their instruction, providing them opportunities to learn about why they need to change their instruction, 
how they need to change their instruction. And then in much smaller groups, in little grade level groups perhaps, they're working with their coach and saying, how does this look in first grade? So we give them the big picture and then they, they fold that down. So as in all things education, time is our enemy. We don't have, ever have enough time with our students or with our teachers to provide them the training. So we continue to work on providing them as much training as we can, both online and offline. And then teachers work on their own with their own small groups, trying to learn more um, about how to best implement it and what it looks like at kindergarten and what it looks like at eighth grade. So speaking to that, how can parents help? Well, we recently began some uh, parent uh, sessions for parents to come to some of our schools in the evening for us to give them an overview of what the Common Core standards look like, what it'll look like in each grade, and what they can do at home. And uh, on our website there are a set of uh, pamphlets put out by the National uh, Parent Teacher Organization that are very clear-cut in English and in Spanish that explain what the Common Core means for each grade level in the district. So that's one piece. We're going to continue using our parent forums to have parents come in and teach them what the Common Core looks like and how they can support their students at home. The one thing that we always ask parents to do with their students is to read. You read to them, they read to you, and then talk about what you're reading. That is a key component for students to be able to say, here's what I've read and here's what I learned from what I read. You had two schools recently that were awarded A-plus schools. Tell us about those. Well, we are very proud of those two schools. McCartney Ranch Elementary and Vilago Middle School were both selected by the Arizona Educational Foundation to be recipients of the A-plus award. Those are the district's fourth and fifth A-plus awards that we've received since 2007. Uh, Cactus Middle School was selected as an A-plus school in 2007. Uh, and then in 2010, our uh, district mock trial program at the middle school level was selected for an A-plus program award. And the uh, Casa Grande Middle School Substance Abuse Prevention Program in 2010 was also selected for the program award. So we're, we're very, very proud of, of, obviously, of all of our schools, <laughs> but we're especially proud of, of the schools that have received uh, A-plus recognition. It's, you know, we're, we're, we are very grateful to have that kind of external validation. Uh, we, we're pretty positive that we're doing a good job, and our parents tell us we're doing a good job. Uh, for the fourth year in a row on our annual survey of parents, 97% of parents gave their child's school a grade of an A or a B. So we know that the, our customers, the people who know their schools best, uh, are very, very impressed with the quality of schooling, but it's, it's great to get that validation from uh, an independent um, agency like the Arizona Ed Educational Foundation. And it's a, it's a very, very rigorous process. There are only 28 uh, schools across the state that were selected for the A-plus award this year. Our two schools were the only two schools in, in the entire county uh, to be selected. And uh, uh, it wasn't just a, a little bit of work for those schools mm -hmm. this year to earn the award. They have been becoming A-plus schools uh, since they each opened six years ago. And um, in all of the efforts that they've undertaken to provide student supports, to create parent outreach, uh, to increase academic, academic rigor, to create a strong culture of high expectations, all of that work has, has really paid off for them. They're both performing very, very well academically, and, um, and it, it's great to have that validated by, uh, by the Arizona Educational Foundation. How many schools are in the district? We have 13 schools. We have uh, nine elementary schools, three middle schools, and then the Early Childhood Learning Center for our preschool. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? We, um, we really appreciate the, the support that uh, parents have given us to this point by coming out and attending the forums that Dr. Wright mentioned. And we just need for them to be engaged uh, with the schools and uh, continue attending school events, attending parent-teacher conferences. I continue working on things like reading at home, as Dr. Wright mentioned, and even the most basic things like learning their addition, subtraction, mm -hmm. multiplication facts. Those things are still really, really important. So we, we need their support. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll learn what Common Core standards mean to high school students. Stay tuned.
Welcome back to City Scene. Joining me now is Melanie Edwards from the Casa Grande Union High School District. Welcome to the show, Melanie. Thank you, Mary. We just had Dr. Davidson and Dr. Wright on the show talking about the Common Core standards for the Casa Grande Elementary School District. Tell us how it's going to affect the Casa Grande Union District. Well, it's a little different because Casa Grande Union High School District, um, we are not unified with the elementary school district. And so some of what we're doing, um, specifically in the high school level, we have students who are taking very uh, specific courses. So when they enter our high school at the freshman level, they need to be prepared um, to take Algebra 1. They need to be prepared to go into an English 1-2 course. At the high school level, we're looking at integrating Common Core um, in the how and the why rather than the who and the what level. And we're asking kids to apply what they know. It could be in a project-based um, environment. We're trying to prepare those kids to be ready for college and or career. And a lot of research tells us that our kids aren't ready to go into the workforce um, and to do those basic skills, be a project manager, to communicate with one another, to do some research and present in that career ready environment. Um, college level also, our students are exiting perhaps with not the writing, not having those writing skills or the math skills necessary to go on to higher level courses. So what do you see changing from the high school, from the AIMS te based test to the Common Core? Um, you're going to see a lot of activity based um, exams. For instance, part of the park exam that Dr. Davidson and Dr. Wright spoke about um, in 2014, part of that will be a multiple choice exam, much like what our students take on the AIMS exit exams. However, there's a writing component here. And when we talk about Common Core standards, that includes literacy. That doesn't necessarily just mean literacy in your English class. That means literacy across the curriculum. So if I'm teaching a history course, what's the literacy? What is the reading that I need to do in that history course to understand how something occurred in history? Why? What were the reasons leading up to this event in history? So we're asking our kids to look at the how and the why and then to be able to articulate that. So what will that look like for kids ready to graduate? Will they, they'll have to pass the park test? At this point, those graduation requirements are the same. We don't have a copy of what the park exam looks like yet. Um, many school districts are kind of nervous about that. We have still have those exit, um, the exit criteria in place. Our students have to have X amount of credits. We have four credits in math, which was implemented this year. They have to have four full credits in math before they can graduate, uh, starting with this particular class, 2013 our class who just graduated yesterday. Um, starting, they have four credits of English, four credits of math. You're going to see those credits remain the same, but what those students are learning, that content, may look a little bit different. As Dr. Davidson implied, you know, we teach an inch deep and a mile wide. We really have to get our students' skill level. Um, they, they need, if you are asked to apply what you know, you need to know the basic information so that you can apply that knowledge. If I have a student who can't do Algebra 1, how can I ask them to move into uh, trigonometry? It's no longer the autonomy and the isolation of a teacher who can go into their classroom, perhaps close the door and teach what they love. I can still teach what I love as a teacher. However, I've got standards in place now that check me to make sure that those kids are getting those benchmarks those um, assessments along the way to make sure their skill level is where it should be. And so when we talk about an exit, e an exit exam, I know that frightens people, but really as educators, we should be looking at that pre-assessment we give our kids along with that mid-assessment. Let's do a check there. If I have a student who's not getting the information at that level, I need to monitor and adjust and, adjust and uh, start implementing differential instruction for those students. Maybe they need another course. Maybe they need remediation. Maybe I've got accelerated students and I'm holding those kids back. So the idea of Common Core is layer, uh, leveling that playing field for our students to move up. So how are the teachers being trained at the district level? That's always uh, the question. How do we implement professional development? Do we ask our teachers to stay and put in more time when we know that our teachers are going home and grading? They're planning on their own time. Many of them spend their summers planning for next year's courses. Um, we have looked at embedding professional development time 
for the last two years. I am proud to say that next year the high school district will have uh, four hour trainings once a month, will be on Wednesdays, um, because the research shows that embedded professional development is the most effective. We need to teach our teachers who are expert in their content area, but may not be experts at this new um, inquiry-based learning per se, or research-based. You know, writing across curriculum, our science teachers are thrilled. They want those students to keep those science journals and to talk about what they've learned and how to keep that journal so that they can show over time, here's my research. I, I just had the most amazing experience through Intel to attend ICEF, which is the International Science and Engineering Fair represented in Phoenix. It was in our great city of Phoenix um, last week. We had students from 60 different countries represented, over 1,600 projects. There's where we need to be. Our kids need to be in that level of application of knowledge. And that's possible for all of our students. We have a STEM-based um, uh, course pathway, if you will, and STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. We're doing that at the middle school level and at the collegiate level. We also are starting that pathway for our, for our high school students so that they look at more research. They're reading more nonfiction. That's one of the changes that will take place with Common Core. No longer can you read just Huck Finn and no um, nonfiction to go along with that. You know, the idea is that you can read um, not just a journal, but maybe I need to do some research. I need to educate myself on a subject. If I'm going into a lab to do some research, or I want to know why the skeletal system is so important to the body, we need our kids to read about that. And so literacy, as one of those focuses, needs to be across the curriculum in PE, in health, in our arts. You know, I know that Martin Hebda, our band teacher, does a lot of reading and discussion and dialogue. Our dance teachers, our career and technical education teachers are already doing that. So we have some amazing programs in place. What we'd like to do now is start an articulation with our middle school, our feeder schools, and then of course our exit school. But where are our kids going? Post-secondary, where are they going? We know that many of them are going to in-state universities. We know that many of them are going to go here to Central Arizona College. So those articulation meetings begin with between our teachers at the middle school level, the high school level, and then of course at the college level. So we're excited. So when would you expect to see some changes or some benefits to the new standards? We're asking kids to think a little bit differently. And I expect to see that take some change over time, starting as you heard Dr. Davidson and Dr. Wright say, at the elementary school level, educating our parents, getting our children to read and then to write w about what they've read about with very specific guidelines. I expect over the next several years we'll see some increase and really we won't know and tell we're having those dialogues with the elementary, middle school, of course, high school and, and colleges. Our college, our college professors will begin to say, you know, the kids are more prepared in math. They're more prepared in the sciences. I'm hoping to see many more students go into the math and the sciences instead of just saying, no, no, I can't do that. Changing those habits of mind for our students make them more prepared for college and career. How will you measure that? The measurement is um, an interesting, assessment is always interesting. As Dr. Wright said, we are CIA individuals, you know, curriculum instruction and assessment. If we're not assessing those standards in the classrooms and the instruction our teachers are using to get those standards across to meet the needs of those students, we fall short. And so we've got to be in those classrooms. We have to be talking with our teachers. There has to be a constant dialogue between not only the history teachers and the science teachers, the math teachers, but the teachers of our students in general. Well, what are you doing to get your kids to think about this a little differently? And so I, I believe that we will start to see changes soon, not just for the sake of a test. I really believe these standards are in place to produce better thinkers. You know, a lot of times our kids are looking, what's the right answer? Just tell me, do I put it in A or B? right? Because they mm -hmm. want to please. So changing that habit of mind from well, which is right, which is wrong to, well, let's explore. What makes this right? What makes this wrong? What makes your choices important to the outcome? 
How will that change? There's four schools in the, the Union District, there correct? Mm -hmm. How will, will that be implemented through all four schools? Yes. Casa Verde will now be housed on our main campus at Casa Grande Union High School. Vista and Casa Grande are the two large comprehensive high schools. We also have Desert Winds High School, which is an alternative high school for our kids. All these standards, all of our students will have to um, participate in that park exam. So all of our teachers will receive that professional development so that all of our kids get that same level of education. So how can parents be involved? You know, it's interesting because in elementary school, our parents are very involved um, with uh, parent and teacher associations. At the high school level, it's a little different. Um, I think parents believe after their kids are driving or um, you know, some of them in some cases are working full time that they don't need to be involved with their children's education. It's not true. I can't say go home and read to your child, but you might encourage discussion um, with your children about their career choices. What do you have interest in? Encourage your kids to go see that guidance counselor, to perhaps visit universities, to talk about their skills, their, um, their desires for where they would best be suited for their career. You know, start talking early. I know many people ta wait until their junior year to start filling out scholarship applications. I would encourage our parents to come to the school, see what's going on. Even though we're not an elementary school, we still encourage participation. Um, parents can certainly become part of the school improvement team, meet with the principal, come and meet with their teachers. I would ask them to please attend parent-teacher conferences. I think that's really critical. Update your information in Power School so we can reach mm -hmm. you if we have a problem. Um, we live in a very transitory world and unfortunately people forget we still need to contact you. And oftentimes it's sometimes just to say, hey, your student's doing a great job. Have you considered encouraging him or her to go into engineering or, or whatever that may be? Just keep that communication open. Allow us to have that communication with you and don't be afraid to come in and speak to us. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just encourage folks to get involved at the, at the school site. And um, don't be afraid of Common Core. We're hoping to produce thinkers, analyzers, kids who can make a decision, who can be self-motivated and self-guarded, self-starters, which will play into the success of their future. To learn more about the Arizona Common Core standards, visit the Arizona Department of Education online. Okay, here's your chance to win a Casa Grande gift bag. But first, we'd like to congratulate last month's City Scene winner, Linda Campbell. Congratulations, Linda. This month's City Scene question is, which of the following schools received an a School of Excellence Award? Submit your answer on our website, casagrandeaz.gov. Just look for the City Scene logo. Good luck. That wraps up another edition of City Scene. If you have an idea for a topic on City Scene, please let us know. Contact us at 520-421-8627. New episodes air the beginning of every month. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Thanks for watching. Remember, City Scene is your inside look at Casa Grande. See you next time.